Recording. Okay, welcome everybody. Okay, let's start with a little product demo. So this is our Monday morning meeting on the working team working on the D3D, the 3D printer. So here's a little product demo so far. So let me just uh, show what we've got so far. Um, but yeah, so we've got the frame and the axes getting ready for the Z-axis. But one feature of this is, um, look at the electronics. Right now they're um, they're actually magnetically attached. So because this is a metal frame, we attach everything magnetically. So all, what you see right now is a very stiff connection. I mean, but this is all magnets. It's actually pretty good. So we use the little magnets, the super magnets. Now check this out. Hey, how about that? Magnets. Uh, put it on. See, so that we can modify that. Also the the power supply too. Look at that. So that's that's actually attached by mag magnets as well. There. So and then it doesn't come off. Uh, yeah, it does. It kind of slips off at the bottom, but but it's attached firmly enough that that it stays on, stays on enough. But so that's the present state. Um, as far as people logging their hours, thanks for logging. As far as everybody else, we want to make sure everyone logs the hours. Let's look at the the dev stats here. Um, so to keep in track of the numbers, so we've got six people on a working team so far doing different things. Uh, but this is what the numbers look like right now. So we're up to six people. Uh, last week we we got up to six. No new people this week. But the working hours are rising. So here what this is showing is look at the... the let me magnify that a little bit. Um, this is weekly hours. So I'm plotting both on the same graph. Weekly hours divided by 10. So that means here we're at about 55 about 55 hours. I'm plotting this divided by 10 so that we can see this on the same graph. But what's happening here is we're seeing that um, the number of developers, like 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 what that means, if the, let's see, if the, the red, okay, that should be labeled, but the red is the hours. If the hours are above the number of developers, that means each person is doing at least 10 hours on average because it's hours divided by 10. Uh, say it again. Ah, sorry, sorry. Let's. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if the streaming quality is is bad, actually, it's going to be good on the recording. So you can so people who watch this, I'm I'm recording this here, so that's going to be pretty good quality. But look at the OSE stats. Um, developer hours are in red. Number of people on a team is at six. So what that means, actually, the number for this week was like 54, 55, uh, but a bunch of people haven't logged. So here this is either not logging or the number of hours that people did is less than 10 so we like to have the red be above the blue or about equal but right now it's kind of like you can see it's on average it's kind of where the 10 number of hours that's pretty good we're pulling together relatively well that's pretty decent so a little more on current status so the latest is um so the CAD is pretty much done. It's we're doing quite well on the CAD. Uh, this is almost the full. Little details missing, but that's the CAD, the frame, the axes, the bed, uh, wiring and electronics are missing. The cable, the um, cable guide, uh, rather the cable chain, uh, which is going to be uh, across this axis here, and all the plugs and connections are not shown here. But most of it is good, and here's how it looks in practice. I'm working on the, right now, getting Marlin configured for the proper directions of motion. So in our system, we've got uh, X and Y is pretty self-explanatory. We've got one X-axis, two Y-axis, because this is Y here, and then Y, and then the Z. The Z is kind of interesting in that when the Z-axis moves up, that means we're closer to the print head. 
so that's different than the standard like the Prusa the print head is up and the and the bed moves up towards the print head Ra sorry rather the the bed doesn't move the the Z axis moves up and down uh, so just a little bit of difference um, end stops so actually little details on the end stops the end stops are on the X are right here on the Y they're behind there and then on the Z well it's really gonna be a pro but I put one interim down there for now so that's where we are I think altogether we're doing well on the bill of materials we're doing um, if we look at also so the the network that open source ecology .org. Um, there's evidence of Jean Baptiste. He's work, working on an infographic, and next steps are let, let's just take a look at the infographic. So that's getting into some of the publicity materials for the actual workshop. Jose, are you going to be able to make it to this workshop by any chance? Excellent, excellent. So here we've got. Um, starting of an infographic just drawing it out but yeah I think I'll just comment on that and we can add more features uh, to this drawing but this is the the network sign up to that if you're say it again I can also help in drawing if you need that oh excellent what's your skill set in that Jose uh, I'm pretty good I, I can do uh, can check it in the what type of situation I can do. Uh, what software do you uh, use? Well, it's not, it's not open source. <laughs> Too bad. So, <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I think, um, let's see, Jean-Baptiste, I think he's got it pretty well. Uh, Jean-Baptiste, you want to fill, fill in a little bit where you are and how you're doing? Right, I did the, the initial sketch for the the infographic, and now I'm to include the new features that you guys are showing in the yeah 3D model. Yeah. And uh, adding some of the cabling, and that should be it. And uh, I'll have that ready later this afternoon. Okay. Yeah. What I should do is probably get you. Uh, so, so as far as the sketch, updated sketch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll we should get a. Once yeah. I have all the features showing, then I can start adding color in uh, DM. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think the thing missing here, like, the thing that I like is how we're going to do the wire routing in terms of having everything very neat. Like, instead of there being, like, six sets of wires to all the sensors, we use one Cat5 cable, like we talked about last week. If we go right. to... Uh, let's just take a look at that. Uh, D three D. So that's going to be pretty nice. It should be pretty neat. Um, right, and those. Where are you guys going to attach the the power supply? Is that going to be? Is that going to go on the outside, or is that going to go? Yeah, I think on the cube, like at the bottom, like where the base is. Yeah, we could put it anywhere actually. So actually, you know, I think you'd have to wait till tomorrow because I'm actually gonna do. I'm, my plan is to do all the wiring tomorrow so that we see how it actually fits. So maybe wait. Great, great. Wait until then. Right, I can wait till that tomorrow. Yeah. Of course. Definitely. So so here was the idea of how the, the wire routing looks. Um, Just to share a little bit on the wire routing here. Yeah, like this, like this one wire, like, you know, like this is, what this shows here is one wire for all the end stops, sensors, temperature in a bed, temperature in a heater, and the three end stops. So, bunch of different elements that are, this, you know, that's the symbol for a controller, just one Cat5 cable, so that's pretty good. And we're gonna shake that down, so that's that's good. Um, as far as the the cat here, I'll open it up here. But yeah, epic job by our team. 
Emmanuel's pulling uh, heavyweight on that and um, that's coming out really good I think the the next step on the CAD is just a little bit of detail like the belt needs to be six millimeters not two uh, adding just a little bit more uh, like the some of the electronics the cable guide and other items to make it a complete picture but otherwise yeah I mean that's pretty good what we have what we have right now I mean it looks attractive uh, the guy who uh, his name is Javier who does the exploded part animations workbench he was not able to m make it to the meeting but he said he would provide us an instructional on the exploded part diagram uh, exp exploded part animation workbench so that should be coming up so that's pretty good um, besides that I think so right now I think the so so we're on a bill of materials I was looking at the bill of materials so for example Jose log I think we could use um, all the bolts are missing from that that's a big deal because we have to um, a lot of different bolts in there and I think there could be so so the this is the bill of materials it's looking pretty good um, but parts that are missing are the the bolt the, the fasteners which are which would be down here um, th that's gonna be a like probably like the biggest number of things is in terms of the number is gonna be fasteners so you want to get those in place but then we should talk about what the next next step would be for going from here and I think with a CAD in decent shape and um, I mean the, the working workings of this as far as this goes as far as the build I think we're in pretty good shape so so the idea is um, this week go through uh, so tomorrow my goal is to have actual prints and then Wednesday through like I want to publish the announcement actually on on Monday so by the time we're meeting by the by the time of the team meeting okay so here we have our um, view perspective but yeah so this is our nice CAD it's looking quite good um, and so forth so yeah a lot of the details are here like the end stops end stops like just to mention a couple of things all those round holes that's magnet attachment so the the end stops are actually attached magnetically so you can take them right on and off that's really nice um, this just to show a couple of features the extruder that plate there has got magnetic Mag magnet holes so it's this is also stuck on so it's a nice firm connection but it's just magnetically stuck on so you can have an interchangeable tool head um, and as far as I mentioned the the power supply and the the controller we can make those magnetically attached as well to have very easy attachment system um, so it's it's looking pretty good as far as the Z Z bed leveling the auto bed leveling I mean that's already in Marlin the open open source controller code the controller software the firmware so that shouldn't be a problem um, one thing we can add is probably update the extruder to include the the Z probe that would be a little addition so a few few little corrections here um, but yeah uh, but next, I think, uh, as we prepare for, for the announcement, so the announcement, so that's Hamburg, Germany, April 22nd, that's all good. Um, main thing about that is getting a decent video. Um, so basically show some of the features of how the 3D printer is built. Probably want to do, um, I do have some time lapse on that, and I want to also do... Uh, another build I have another set of frames here like like when we have the frames we have the cutouts um, like I have frame material for a smaller printer version so I can actually do another build and show how it goes together for an another pro promo video so that will be pretty good and I also have the frame from the big one the one that's 24 by 24 inches if I have the time I, I, I could think about 
uh, building that just to show that oh you can make a small one you can make a big one it's all the modular system that works so that's that's very attractive and as far as the the revenue model from that like the idea is we're opening up the the blueprints for the the workshop so that anyone else can take it how are you guys feeling about i mean if we if we do this on on the 22nd of april um anyone interested in, in hosting another one after that or is that too early to talk about that because of course i would encourage it you mean hosting? yeah hosting where um you mean in, in the front of the net yeah anywhere I mean, the idea is that once we do this and it works out, I mean, we'll see how many people show up to the event and how what kind of public reception we we have. This is market testing. You know, we're testing this. Yeah. Is it working? But, I mean, then we, we can talk about replicating that wherever people are. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah. One of the proposals I, I have for you was to, to Where is that? So we can. Well, they will do. You can check it out in the website. They will do it in Berlin, in, uh, for instance, or in the Netherlands. And they, I, I don't think they have yet a pretty clear program, you know. So perhaps we could do something there. Uh, Otherwise, I, I'm up also for trying to do something here in the Netherlands. Yeah. Sorry, I missed. Who's the group that you mentioned that is that could possibly do this? Okay, okay. Yeah. That's one community we could address. I think there's potential there. And the other thing I was trying to plan was an event in Cuba by the end of the year with this kind of approach as well. Are you now going back you going back to Cuba or of course I go back to Cuba, Cuba. <laughs> so I go back and forth there. Oh yeah, you travel you travel back and forth often or how often do you get out there? Sorry? How often do you go to Cuba? I plan to go at least uh, once, in, once in a year and spend uh, yeah. uh, more than one month or one month, you know. But I also have colleagues there. I have a lot of uh, probably are interested yeah. in something like that. Yeah, I mean that's good. So that brings up to the next topic and that is that is inviting like all of us inviting more people to the dev team. See our stats on the right here, but uh we need more people cuz right now it's it's kind of nice. We've got we're dividing the labor like I was pro prototyping a lot here. Emmanuel was doing a lot of the CAD, like you were doing Jose you were doing the the BOM, Jean-Baptiste is doing the the graphics and stuff. So we need to keep adding people. Um but with that said, can we pull in, like Jose, can you pull in any people from Cuba or other people who, uh, around well, you? Or? I, 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 I'm already doing that, sending messages to people. Okay. From, so, yeah, I, in principle, I'm doing that. I, I haven't recruited anyone yet, like, officially, but okay. I'm trying that sounds good. Then, then you can get the official OSE recruiter badge. Well, I mean, I think we're gonna drop a little badge. We still owe you guys a, a welcome email and a badge, the official CAD badge. That so, uh, we're gonna have Richard send that out. So Richard, our HR guy, uh, our recruiter in training, HR generalist, we're sending out a welcome email with like all these different links, including your badge, the the thing that. Actually, Jean Baptiste drew up. A, it's our first official CAD badge, kind of like a skills badge, and we should probably get one for recruiting. As in, whoever brings in invites people to the official OSE dev team, uh, they would get a get a a badge for recruiting. But that's a little side side note. Um, how about yourself, Jean Baptiste or Emmanuel? You guys uh, working on pulling any people in? Uh. That would be nice uh, for the developers. Yeah, I mean, you said your brother, for example, he's joining you. Would he be interested? Yeah, I'm waiting 
for him to come here. Yep. And then, yeah, he will be available. Yeah. But, yeah, I have, I'm, I have a group on Facebook. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty much, uh, very popular. So, I made a post there. I, one guy already wants to join the team. Uh, send the link in the okay. chat box to your to your your Facebook. That's good, okay. because I mean, you know, we're the guys that can invite people most effectively because we're doing it. So that's good, and I'm and I constantly talk to various people about this. Um, um, are you are you planning to to have? I saw the reading that you talked about forty local. Are you? Going forward on this, like creating uh, OC communities, local local communities, or this is not yet part of your. Yeah, I mean, we do want to do that, and I think the start to that is is the development team. Like I would say, um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. before on the o the OC chapter, I think I had something like uh, like a couple a, a pair of people who are going to be like the co-founders of a chapter. So what we should have is if we get a couple of people on a dev team who are cons who are existing contributors then you can we can talk about starting a chapter it's something we can talk about definitely um but it have to be bu built around the development team so that yeah. the the goal of each chapter would be that you're trying to pull in together like a whole group that either you either they, sh they all of them show up to this meeting but i mean really like these meetings right now you can only hold like 12 people or so or maybe like once you we gain some traction and momentum then you can actually work with them so we have you know our team core meeting here then then those guys meet after that so we, like i mentioned the other week about um having like continuous around the globe like we we pass the tag team kind of kind of tag team so so development is going on all the time and just faster so because there's plenty of things to do like for example as soon as we do this um the 3d printer one of the things to do would be the extruder, like the Lyman extruder. I mean, that's an open source device that works right now that if we had more people on the team, we could allocate some people to the team uh, on on the extruder part so you can make your own filament. So there's many, many things, like uh, including other things like designing a cordless drill that's 3D printed. Like there's a lot of, lot of many different things, like adding a laser head to the 3D printer and then continuing with the development. So there's, I mean, we need, we just need a lot of people and we also want to train process managers. So, so the part that's going to be the bottleneck, like as far as the chapters go, is is people like yourself, like you, like you're, you know, you're learning with a team here. We're learning about the process. How do we actually collaborate effectively? And then you can become a, a process manager for your team. So basically, you know how the whole thing works. And then you can organize your team there. So it would be good. But I think uh, probably the prerequisite on that is let's go through like this one 90 day development cycle and 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 we should talk about starting like a formal chapter like like osc charter so we talk you know we want to set up a charter and a basic agreement and all that to make that happen so that you're actually core core developers de developers on the core program which would really make this go better so here's um yeah that sounds good Let's see. Oh, so this is where you, you post today. Eh? Um, where's that post? It is very popular. Oh, it's very awesome. Oh, okay, so oh, you don't have a link to the ex explicit post? It went down all the way already. I can't do that, uh, I think. If you find it, then we can scroll yeah yeah i mean it's getting that thing is eaten up that's yeah a lot of posts there but that's that's a good thing yeah that's good that's good so let's see can you find oh there it is there it is so let's uh two hours ago um yeah yeah it'll be good to let's see can i embed that post in our discussion group if i can um See, if I were to share that to my own log, I can then embed it. D do you guys know that? Um, 
I'll share it to the... I, I lost you. Yeah, I'll share that to the... No, I'm just going to share that on my... Um... Share now onto my... I can embed that so we can see, like, for example, on this, like... So you got a bit of dis discussion here. That's pretty good. Kyle Reese is on there. That's another guy who went to the thing. Josh Levy, how can I get involved? All right, so so we should um, see that's that's recruiting right there. We can we can do that. Um, you gonna respond to him? Oh yeah, you did right there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So. Yep, that's where we want to send them. Um, it's not only the 3D yeah. printer, all the other stuff that we are developing, it's, it's one thing may, you know, attract different kind of people. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we definitely, definitely want people on board. Excellent. So let's talk about a little bit of collaborative literacy. Let's start the next game. So, so we're pretty decent on as far as where everything is going. And, uh, but we do want to keep building the team. So next step is actually the instructionals of how we, how we build this whole thing. So what we want to do, and, and I think all of us should really tag team on that and try to network on that as much as we can. Um, so what I would suggest to do, so let's, let's actually try that right now as far as a little collaborative process of how the instructionals could go. So we actually have a template. Uh, Jean Baptiste, can you pull up the te the documentation template, the official OSC template that you drew up a long time ago? Because I think this would be a chance to use that. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna. So uh, while you pull that up, make a copy of that and one that we can actually start editing. And um, so the first thing about this whole process is, if there's a lot of people working together. We divide things up. Let me uh, reduce my bandwidth in case some people can't see it. Um, divide and conquer is the idea. The module-based design is the idea. And we're at the step, so I'm going to go to share my screen again and go back to the uh, development template page just to orient you, like as far as, you know, learning about process management, where we are overall in the development process so there it is uh, so while you Jean Baptiste while you pull that out so we can actually start editing uh, one uh, and we will we can make one of those for each module but okay so just to review on the development template um, yeah I have this graphical representation that that's, looks pretty confusing at the start, but there's a whole logic to this development process. So, um, like, there's all this preliminary work, which is the research of how it works, background, studying all of that. But but then you get to the, you know, we've got the concept we're working on. We have this uh, modular, scalable 3D printer design. We got to the 3D CAD, and from that point, um, one one very important thing is right there: build instructions. Like we start on a BOM, I think we can actually do the bill of materials, which is right here, and the build instructions. Let me uh, maybe zoom in just a little bit. Build materials is started. Build instructions are here, but the idea is on the build instructions. Once again, if we got, you know, six people on a team, we can right now divvy up one person per module. Okay, so what we should do is keep track of that. Uh, so we really see like we really need a process manager here because what I want to do is, if we go to our 3D printer group, like I'm see I'm trying to keep track of it and all of that, but on a D3D page. Ah, the internet is rather slow. So let me let me keep talking about this here. 
um, divide it into modules by each person and then document that so one we have the the d3d meeting log where we divide the tasks but what we should set up at the meeting log and um jb uh how are you doing there oh sorry ah share screen yeah scream scream if i don't do that uh, i'm sh i'm sharing the screen right now um so i posted the link here for the okay i'll ask you this there's the there's the meeting log, so D3D meeting log. Please go there. And are you familiar with how we used Scrummy before? I'll, I'll, I'll get you to be like interim process manager here to, to start filling in the things since you're kind of aware of how this goes. So, so there's scrummy.com slash D3D. Okay, Scrummy is a Scrum board where you post tasks. Um, and this is actually something, this is an online, let me explain Scrummy. It's an online platform and it's a Scrum board. It shows tasks to do, like, okay, you got a task there. You can move it to in progress. Then you can move it to verify. And then you can move it to done. So basically what we want to do here, uh, for one, we can embed this. But if you go to scrummy.com slash D3D, right now our process manager should do this. They should, I mean, this should be prepared, but we should have this embedded on the, the log, the D3D log page. So if we go to D3D log, that should be embedded because the log is where we, so D3D meeting log is where we keep track of all people, what they're assigned. And last time what we did was we, uh, so here's like our team meetings recorded. So I'm recording all the meetings here. But, you know, for example, here we were dividing up tasks. So what would be really effective is to actually embed a scrummy. Um, JB, do you know how to embed it? Can you embed scrummy? Yeah, okay, embed that and then we can actually put people's names like for example um, change that so for example Marchin uh, I'll work on the um, I'll start working on the x-axis build instructions okay now the x-axis so right there Oh, what happened? I, I lost it. I didn't save. Click save. X, X axis build instructions. And put my name on it. Save. Okay. So it shows up here. All right. So uh, the stories here. So here are stories. You can add these stories. So these are all the tasks like frame. So on the frame, we can we can say instead of doing that as frame, we say we say uh, March 13, which is today's date. So we can actually organize this by day. Just you know, just those are the tasks for for this week. Instead of organizing by like parts, okay. There's X axis built. So then add another one. Who wants to do the instructional? So let's say Jose, uh, Y axis, Y one axis instructional. Um, and I would say Y1 plus Y2 because they're very similar. So do you want to do this only for a week or? I think we can experiment. I mean, this is right now, you, if you go in there, go in there to scrummy.com slash D3D. It's completely editable. You can edit it. But yeah, I think it, it would be good to do it by week so that we, we are clear about what all is happening every week. That'll be one way to organize it. So, okay, exercise for you, Jose. Add add another task to that, and Emmanuel, add another task to it too. Because uh, because what we want to do, I'm gonna add one for Jonathan. I'm gonna assign Jonathan to the frame instructional. Jump in on 
please, uh, for a second, question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can so... Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah. Because, uh, I can hear you. Some things that I, I, I missed is like, uh, you know, the backlog list. Yep. To see what, what is to be done. Really would help a lot. In it would. That's exactly right. So this is a, a nice backlog list that we can we can do and every one of us should should put their a task to that so um, so then what are the other parts extruder uh, Cedric assigned to Cedric Cedric welcome um, Cedric you gotta log your hours I haven't seen you log this week or last week please do that uh, there's a link to the timesheet on your log um, okay, but going forward here, so then what are the other parts? There's the z-axis. Uh, who can take that? A manual, maybe. I'm not seeing any one of you put in, in tasks there. Because if you refresh it, like if someone else was editing it, I would refresh. Oh, there it is. Someone put in belt clips. Who's going to take a belt? Well, that the belt clips would be... Um, Belt tightening instructional would be um, there's a whole procedure for that. Like it's it's kind of subtle, so whoever would want to take that could take that. But the only only unfriendly thing about this scrummy thing is that you have to hit refresh to see what someone else did. But otherwise, anyone in the world can collaborate, and it's open. So it's kind of tricky, but I've never had anyone mess with my scrummy. So it's good to keep it open because that then we can uh, keep moving things on the progress line. So uh, we've got Marchin, Jonathan, Cedric, Jose, Emmanuel, um, maybe Jean Baptiste. But Jean Baptiste, you're 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 doing um, the video, uh, the. Uh, not the video, but the infographic. So I think there's plenty of. Um, I think that's it's probably going to take all of your time, unless you want to also try to do an instructional for a part. Well, you're set. You can help us out by providing maybe setting up all the templates. So let's look at the meaning log. And we're going to look at taking the existing templates that we already drew up. So this is Jean-Baptiste's work from before. We already drew up instructional making templates. Um, JB, fill me in where you are on that. Are you trying to embed that or set one up? I'd have to... Um, yeah, I'm not so sure if I ever did a tutorial on that or not. Uh, you did. We have... Um, Go to your log. <laughs> right, uh, right, but you've got the the templates. Uh, so here it is, Jean Baptiste log, and um, like somewhere we have the instructional template. Um, documentation standards. Um, Okay, so you're not able to find the the template. Well, the template I posted the link to it earlier. That was the manual, right? The ah, okay. Let's take a look at that. The compressed rigorous. Uh huh. Okay, man, I can't even. I don't know why I can't. You need to open up access to that. Is that a manual from before? That was just like the compressed earth brick one. Let's let's use that one. That's a pretty attractive one. So, but you just got to open up permissions. So, tell you what, why don't you open up the permissions to that? And let's have the team work right now. So, so so JB, do that right now. Open up the permissions. Okay? So, everybody click on that document. Somehow it's still telling me it's you need permission. Let me try again. Okay, there it is. Okay. okay. 
Um, okay, instructions for everybody. You look at my screen. Um, and there's the scrummy, and there's the... Where did my document go? Okay, let's let's open it up again. Here's the document. Okay, and and it's loading up. It's a template for doing instructionals, and we can use this so it's fully editable. You can now say, okay, so 3D printer. So this is developer's manual. This is not developer's manual, it's really a builder's manual. So this is a build instructions. Um, I'm going to switch into that with my other account. Make a copy of this. So whoever created it, um, you're fine. But this document, go to file and then make a copy let's see how many pages does this document have this one's got it's essentially let's see it's in how extensive is this hmm, it's got a lot of pages in it you might want to trim it down but it's got a lot of different placeholders for the kind of content that goes into a build manual so you can kind of see how this works. So make a copy. Uh, it still tells me view only, so I, I'm not sure you, you set it to... Okay, but you can do make a copy. JB, you didn't set it to edit probably, but I don't know. But we can still open it and make a copy. So do that. Make a copy. So this one here will make this the overall 3d printer okay no you really got to share it uh jb please share that for right. edit purpose I, I unlocked the... okay let's see if it works now. So anyone with the link can edit now okay sounds good but everybody make a copy okay we'll make this one the overall build manual and then we can make tiny ones for individual modules because we work with module based design the development template says we break things into into parts and we're we're going to do the build instructions which are right here uh, in the development template so that's where we are um, the build instructions are the main element that allows you to build it like the next phase is we're going to build it and then you get build pictures build data collection build documentation but essentially the main thing we have to worry about is the build instructions because we've got a lot of the cad um, the main missing link right now is build instructions like the CAD we can keep refining and doing other things with it but build instructions the CAD goes into the build instructions okay so the 3d CAD being the critical element in that we can cut cut and paste or basically hide and unhide parts within FreeCAD. okay so if you guys made a copy of that have you guys made a copy let me know when you have Um, and so it's transparent <clears throat> our process manager should at this point uh, like put links and say the the meeting log like in this meeting log what we should do first of all start Monday March 13 and then we should put links and I'll let you do that so this is we're trying to do this together March 13, 2017. Um, first, we want to put in the iframe of the scrummy on top. JB, if you could do that, I don't know if you can do that, but try to embed it on the D3 meeting log. But right here, I'm going to embed working documents, uh, working instructional documents, so that there's a link on the wiki where we actually uploading that document or linking to it so that someone can find it in the sense that the wiki has the links to every single asset in the project okay so working instructional documents so we can pretty much kind of recopy what we have so for example frame so d3d so it'll be d3d frame instructional 
instructional. Um, so we're working on instructional. So we go to D3D. So you identified it's D3D and it's the frame instructional. That's what this piece of content is. So D3D X axis build instructional. I mean, we can say frame build instructional because since that's more descriptive. So X axis build instructional. So what I'm creating now is placeholders where you guys are going to embed the files that you have copied. Okay. So next is D3D Y axis build instructional and that will include the Y1 and Y2. So what we're doing at a meta level here is creating placeholders where now we go to our meeting log and we can find um, where all these assets are as far as you know I can look at it and see what if that has been done. And then you should also paste that okay so say you know say I save this uh, say um, okay so that's saved there and I look at the scrummy so so say Jose you got y1 the y-axis x-axis is me so what I should do is I make my copy and I title it x-axis instruction because we don't have to worry about the overall instructional the overall instructional is going to come together once you all create the module instructionals and then we can say okay for the overall instructional we're just taking the modules and, and putting them together right so I'm making a copy for me so it's the x-axis build instructional and I'm saying okay so I'm making a copy and then I'm gonna embed this I'm gonna put file Okay, after it, in the file menu, it's publish to the web. So you take that and embed the HTML code within the wiki. Okay. So for me, the x-axis build instruction is coming up. Publish to the web in the file menu of the docs. Yeah. Um, the belt tightening should be within each, like the X, Y, and Z, because what's going to happen during the build is people are going to build it module by module, and they're going to have to have a complete manual, right? So you can't say, oh, now look elsewhere for the belt tensioning. You want to put it into right into that module as we build it module by module. Um, so do that. Um, so I'm do doing publish to the web, embed. If you want to look at my screen how I do it, publish to the web, embed, publish, okay. And then I get the HTML code. And then in this D3D log, I got the x-axis build instructional. I click on that. And then I embed it. <clears throat> so what you have to do is is put the embed code. I typically click on this W here. What I like to do is click on that W and get you that. So I, in a highlighted text, I paste what I got, but the tags here are HTML and slash HTML. And then after that, what I do is put in an edit link, edit, so that you can go back to editing that. So look what happened. Um, I sa I'm saving that. And now I've got my uh, build instructional here um, embedded. And it looks nice and all that. Uh, but that's, that's actually my working document, so I click Edit on that, and I actually go back to editing that, which I have the window open here already. So now I can actually step in instructional. Uh, 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 um, and go at it.
step one, step two. There's um, what would be useful though is if in an instructional template we would have um, windows. Let's see, is there is there any good page like that? Um, I would take see this this is nicely formatted. Look at this for example, page number twenty seven. If we just do like okay, instructional here. So step one, you know, uh, steps. You can say step one. Yeah, everything here is editable. These are all templates. So what we could probably use is you know within that template, there's a like for example page twenty six, twenty seven, or even page um, 31 there's some nice pages that that lets you do nice formats um, nice formats for instructions yeah but does that make sense to everybody or am I talking to myself <laughs> Uh -huh. I've seen many instructionals uh, that work uh, more like in a week. Why would you do it? Just a question to understand why. Yeah, there's actually a good reason to, for that because right now, for example, if we have a hundred people, okay, imagine. Say it again. Uh, am I breaking up? Okay, let me uh, turn. Document, right. Okay, so here's the idea. The idea is, and it's not so important for now. Right now, we can't appreciate why you want to do that. But in the future, imagine we built our team to a hundred people, and then we said, in this next hour, we're going to do the complete instructional for D3D, and that becomes possible because you have a hundred people. But how do you do that? real-time cloud embeddable docs you can edit them in real time and that's where the Google Docs comes in anything else that's a wiki you're gonna get edit conflicts only one person can edit a wiki at one time so there's no way to manage collaborative contribution like say you've got 12 people working on a frame instructional which you could easily do like if everyone knew the procedure and we have a nice video you can swarm it completely and that's why we want to use the cloud editable docs. Now we're using cloud Google Docs, but there are open source, um, like uh, there is a couple of open source packages that are already like based on Open Office that are coming out for cloud ed editable. It's not we were evaluating that, and it's uh, we're looking into getting that. But right now we've got the Google Docs, so we can migrate to that later. But there is that's a good question, and there's a, there's a good reason to do that. And right now. Um, the thing we can do right now, it helps right now too in a sense that you don't get edit conflicts. Like for example, if by chance two of you are working on the same instructional, um, like you're not going to get edit conflicts. Right now we're dividing each instructional per person, so you're, you're not going to run into that problem, but in the future we will. So we want to set it up for scalability at this time. A um, couple of more things. Um, go back to I'm gonna share my screen again one more thing when you embed your Google Doc so I'm sharing my screen so I got my my Google Doc that I put onto that page so if you go to that um, if you see the D3D page D3D log which is our meeting place uh, our record for the meetings so if you go to the log you see that ah, D3D log you see that um, okay you see on Monday March 13 my link got filled because I already embedded my thing in there this is cool so JB just did this we Im just embedded this scrummy this backlog and here you see where I embedded this this already exists so this page already exists I just clicked on it and we have the x-axis build instructional so now if someone wants to collaborate with me click edit 
and then you can keep editing that document. Excellent. Now, one more detail about the document itself. In order for somebody else to edit it when you created it, you have to go to the sharing setting and open it up. And I would suggest anyone in the world can edit. Don't worry about that because if you get hacked, there's a ver version history within Google Docs. So you can restore any any hacks, but we've never been hacked to date, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but here, I will go change this, public on the web, access, anyone, no sign in required can edit. Make sure you do that, and that way, uh, you should do that up front, because then you're not going to get, like, say, say we've got 100 people, you're literally going to get 100 emails if everyone's paying attention, saying, open up the document because I can't edit. So you gotta do that up front, make sure you do that. Uh, and that way you can now start editing the doc. So, so for example, how, do you, how are you gonna go about doing the documentation? Well, we have the full CAD and that's why you pass the free CAD test uh, so you can do this exactly. So for example, if you're working on a, uh, and I should open up, let me open up a doc within FreeCAD to show you how that works but if you have a complex assembly you can hide everything by clicking on the item in the tree view so you can expose okay if you want to build the axis part by part you simply hide and unhide parts does everyone know how to hide and unhide parts in FreeCAD Yeah, it's just visibility settings. You can you can hit space bar if you're in the tree view and that will hide and unhide a part. Uh, this is my crash. Yeah, I'm not even going to open up my free cut because it's really slow. I'm I'm doing I'm recording and doing too many things at one time here. Um Okay. But then Based on the division of labor, we can now go about doing the instructionals. And, and if we have six people, the easy way to do that so people don't conflict with each other is you do it by modules. So that's why we're selecting the modules within, the, um, within this scrummy, within our backlog. So the question now is, does everyone have a good allocation of what they could do? Uh, for the build and then how do you know how to build that thing <laughs> well uh, knowing how to build something is kind of you have to get the hang of it by um, by understanding how a thing goes together but you can logic some of the things out like for example for the frame um, we know that we're we're gonna put it together and we're going to do one of two things, epoxy it firm in place, or like we talked about, if people want to take that and fold it back up to take home, we have to do it not permanently. So one thing we can do is put like corner attachments, like on the top of the frame, so that the frame all goes together, but then you can take apart the frame so we can use the angles with magnets to keep the corners together or we can use like a tab like a corner on top of the frame to put it together um but basically i mean we haven't decided any of that so we have to kind of logic it out so if you're intuitive about this you can actually figure out okay this is how i put one thing together or the axis i mean you know as far as the axis you kind of have to think about okay if these are the parts this is how they go together you know, like you can say, well, this, you have to do this first, then second, this. Uh, if you're putting the axis together, before you put the belt on, you, the, for example, the motor has to have the pulley on it and stuff like that. So so it's kind of intuitive. And um, I, I mean, do you guys feel comfortable trying to take a stab of how you actually do the build instructional? Because you can do it in, in FreeCAD. You can unhide and hide parts. But then the question is, well, what's the actual procedure? How do you people feel about that? Uh, is that kind of uh, too much or 
would that be doable for you to take a first stab at doing the instructionals? Any comments? What What is your suggestion to the instructional? Uh, say that again. Yeah, you, you open a big document uh, to read about how to write the instruction. That's the first step to do it. Yeah. Um, which document are you referring to? Uh, yeah, you mentioned a document on how to do instruction. Mainly, basically, I'm yeah. asking uh, how to start. Yeah, how to start. There is a document that, that means... Um, if you go back, well, where else would you find it if not at the build instructions? Let's see. Does that pull it up? Yeah, it does pull that up. So, there's a procedure for how you do that. I mean, the procedure describes more about like the whole process using so the template no let's see what we got here see if this one has everything yeah this is like the if you go to this page yeah this one full protocol and sample so this is like this this example of how to do it but yeah. It talks about more you guys already have been told like most of the process. The question now is what are the actual steps, you know? So as far as the steps go, I can show you an example of um well actually I think what you can do is study, for example, in the CEB press version um, CEB press there's a set of instructions you can see kind of how it went together so it's so it's a template of an actual real instructional so you can copy it's the best way would be probably to go to look at its format so I'm gonna put that link to you here um, Here this is. So this is CV Press 6. And here's the actual instructional files. Oh, let's see, I'm not sharing this. Let me let me share that with you. Um, so so let me pick one. Like say the frame. Okay, let me get you this link here. Okay, so I'm pasting a link into the chat box. That's an actual frame instructional. And uh, that comes from the CEB Press 6 page. So it's linked from there. You can see more. Okay, yep, no problem. Um, that's That's where it's linked from, but the idea is it boils down to so you can follow the template you can follow the instructionals under build instructionals build instructions so uh, build instructions is the page um, but the bottom line is it's step by step and you've already got the idea about dividing the modules using the google doc 
and then embedding it in your own uh, log and then using some of the fabrication icons that we have that are linked in that build instructions template and from then on it's figuring out the step order and to do the step order you really have to think about it but the idea is um, from hiding and unhiding parts within FreeCAD think about simply like you've got the whole thing built in FreeCAD and then you have to pretty much reverse engineer it to say okay I strip away one piece by one piece by hiding and unhiding and that pretty much should be able to let you figure out the order of assembly it's just basic logic essentially you have to think about it okay um, here's the the x-axis well it's got screws that are holding the clamps together well you obviously have to take out the screws and then the key to the instructional is being very specific about what goes first and second so after you do the whole hiding and unhiding you have to basically evaluate your procedure and then using logic like for example can this can I hold this does this work like does it fit does it make sense so Jose you're asking does it make sense to build the model in the order of assembly what do you mean by that? Or when you are in FreeCAD, there is like a structure. Yes. Things that we do, right? Yeah. So the question is if we can actually make it consistent with, with the assembly uh, logic, you know? Ah, okay. You're talking about in a tree view? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's if the person who was designing it actually paid attention to that but that that would actually what you're pointing out is probably a step that would happen after the the the, th the instructional manual is made so yeah. because that's just too hard while you're designing it it's too hard to think about design and fabrication at the same time because just the workflow well, I of mean, design after, after as part of the documentation uh, absolutely final delivery absolutely uh, good point so the final final product would be that you can actually look in the tree view and by by going in order in the tree view yeah. you could actually see how the entire thing is made now that would be pretty that's pretty advanced that that's another step and and hopefully we can get to that and we should but the first step would be to i would say first is you document the whole procedure by hiding and unhiding within freecad check the basic logic whether it actually makes sense and then as a final step you would actually end up changing the like redoing the model in FreeCAD so that the tree view matches the order of assembly and that's possible because we're saving all the individual files right we have the individual module files and we should have an ultimate document that's why I was calling out for the exploded part diagram where we have a link to every single part item by item so that at the end when you're actually for example doing the proper tree view you can use that exploded part diagram uh, because the workflow in FreeCAD is you import parts it's easiest if you import parts from individual files so that's kind of it kind of gets a little complicated but yeah that's that's the workflow we would have to do um, now what we do know right now is that we have the D3D overall assembly on the D3D page um, and that has a link to all the different modules now besides the modules we should have individual part files as well that was part of the instructions that we were going with like as we were doing this we were asking everybody to say save every individual part and save the assemblies so if that's not done people should go back to their parts and make sure that that can ha that's there on people's logs so if we go to let me see if you go to D the d3d page plain d3d you will see the modules and then the overall the d3d integration 
that has links to all the modules coming together but depending who did each part that part should be on that person's log so you see how kind of how it starts getting tricky that why it's so important for us to keep track of everything on our logs and keep track of the individual files but we do have the d3d integration page on the wiki <clears throat> from which you can download the individual modules and then you would have to go to people's logs so it's a good idea to put everybody's log link to everybody's log on your log so you can go back through their past work over the last few weeks and pick out every individual part because one of the things for example for the complete instructional on the axis you have to use all the proper bolts I'm not even sure if the I mean in principle the full files are available with all the bolts they should be there and if not we need to go back and put in the bolts back in because we have to have one complete file with every single part in it so that we can yeah I mean somewhere we have to have all the individual parts yeah um, so that's that's where we are um, but to sum that up it's essentially a, a logical thing where by visual like the first cut of an instructional would be you taking things apart within FreeCAD one part by one part but the requirement is you have to have absolutely all the parts in there you can't start with a CAD model that doesn't have the screws because most of the instructions are going to be like which screw to screw in first because the order is going to matter the point about the instructional is that what is the build order there's going to be a, an optimal order and an order that's going to be harder take more time or whatever and that's the logic that you have to put in simply by thinking about it you know like if you're making the axis you have the right side of the axis left side well naturally you're gonna put in all the bolts on one side first possibly or, or maybe no maybe you won't maybe maybe there's a reason why you want to do one bolt on one side one bolt on the other side but you have to think about all kinds of cases like that like for example from looking at it I wouldn't see why you want to put one bolt on one side and then go to the other side it's probably easier to finish one side and then go to the other side so you keep track of things easier you know things like that uh, but but basically everything about the order does matter that's how you you have the difference between a build that happens in one day and one that doesn't happen in one day and we're the only guys I mean right now the unique feature of the workshop is nobody that, that I know of right now runs a regular 3d printer build workshop on this planet some people have and typically they take more than one day but we're the only guys that are doing one day builds and we're intending to make that a regular workshop for OSE so we can actually have a continuous cash flow for the operation so that's the idea but that that's where it really matters as far as the high quality of the instructional and after we have the instructional um, we can do videos Jonathan can do some video because he's building the printer uh, I've got the printer build here um, but if you guys don't have the frame parts or a 3d printer to print that um, nobody else can do it there's also the Germany guys they're supposed to uh, get the frames cut and do a sample before the build as well so we can have an example there mm -hmm. yeah and Jose is gonna get a printer soon so that's that's pretty good uh, but you'd have to get the the frame cut so I also um, didn't check on did anyone actually get quotes for frame cutting maybe and then we can wrap up maybe for the meeting anybody do that or no I've been um, sending out quote, uh, quote requests uh -huh. to receive, so, so yeah I received different uh, I actually got one for a laser cut that's actually really expensive and so I'm, I'm still looking into that what was that so, yeah, price so you're talking for a set of three a, a set of three meaning so it's right it's the but it's not just the the largest size frame right it's all the smaller frames too yep six pieces for each set right right it was 24 in total yep yeah 24 parts in total yeah six times four because it's really four four cutouts per frame there what was that price just for reference uh, 
$500. How much? Five hundred. No, 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 not stain, not stainless. Stainless is going to be pretty expensive. You didn't, uh, you didn't ask them for mild steel, just regular steel. What was that? You didn't ask them for regular steel. Really? Okay. So yeah, that's the wrong guy to. Uh... Okay. So yeah, so make make sure it's regular steel. But yeah, that's I mean that's pretty expensive. But we don't need a stainless steel frame. That could be why it's pretty expensive. Um, so anyway, yeah, we should we should get that. So anyway, at this point, um, any questions on what we got to do? Like go basically to the CAD. The first question is, do we have people's names on the list? for what to do and is that acceptable so x-axis I'm gonna start on that um, Jose you can do the y-axis it should be that all the nuts and bolts should be there so you got to download it so check that first download it ASAP but communicate with me like um, send me emails back and forth we should be communicating on that to see how everyone's doing on that um, so hopefully that's good frame we're gonna get Jonathan to do the frame I think he can do it extruder Cedric you think you could do the extruder or maybe maybe Z no 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 man you do the z-axis I think you should do the no that's that's a manual z-axis XYZ extruder frame well extruder extruder is a good one I guess because um uh, 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 you think you could put together a, a, an instructional on how to build that uh, yes it would have to be extruder with since the extruder by itself is pretty easy it will be extruder uh, plus the the mount of the extruder the magnetic mount that mounts to the axis I should, I should add the mount on the side that I uploaded on the weekend yeah that would be good okay. um, and then that extruder has wiring so is there any way we can do wiring right now yes uh, within FreeCAD? Where this wire will go. How would you do the wiring? Tell me, because that's always an issue, how we do that. You add the, you use, you, you use the, the graph work bench to, to build just a line and extract a cycle uh, through the line. Uh huh. What which workbench? Uh, the path workbench. Path workbench. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you could do that, that would be good. Um, now here's another thing. Like since I'm not familiar with, I haven't done that. It would be good if you could. You think you can catch us a video? Catch a video of how you do that. That could be perhaps. Uh, uh, no. I, I, mm, wait. Uh. On how to make wires. Uh, okay. You think you could? You see me? Uh, I put that in the scrummy. If you could do that, um, so so if you refresh the scrummy, and also now, so now you can in general do the instructional make sure you embed it in the wiki third embed it in the log fourth after you start this make sure you move the scrummy the backlog to the in progress window so that we know that you started because we can look at this scrummy 
and we can see what's in progress and what hasn't been started. And then, of course, that should be reflected in your log that you... Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't understand what are you talking about streamy. So, okay, so you know the scrummy.com sla slash d3d, so this link. Did you uh, click on that yet? So that's that's the um, make sure everyone's got a link to the scrummy, which is the backlog, where we're keeping track of who's doing what, and that's a good visual yes. thing. And it's already pasted into the, it's actually already pasted into the, the working team page. At D3D log. Scrummy? I don't, yeah, I don't how, how, how that works? Yeah, we need an instructional yeah. on that. I should do a quick video on that because that's that's something that's quite useful. But what you do is you can edit that and you can put tasks in there. It's like a whiteboard with sticky pads. You just okay, okay. click a plus and then yes. you just add tasks and what once you start your task, you can move your task into the different columns that are there, which are in progress yes. and so forth. Um, so that would be good. Um, wait, what happened to the Scrummy? Is that on a D3D main page, right? Yeah, it's on the main page. It, it should probably be on a meeting log. We should add that to the meeting log. Uh, yep, Cedric, what do you say? Yes, I was asking uh, the x the x axis of the scrumming. What what is it? The x axis is t in the left. Yes. Yeah, I mean it's it's time. It's it's the x axis is there's four columns. There's the to do, in progress, verify, and done as the different columns. Okay. So that's once you, for example, I start the frame instructional or x-axis build instruction I simply drag that uh, by the by its tab and put it into the progress column so for example if you refresh you can see that I dragged it into the in progress column but okay what I should do is I should do a why do you have uh, 13 uh, uh, March where do I have what uh, the, uh, March 13 uh, I don't understand in, in the, in the, Show the screen here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show the screen. Um, yeah, so so what I'm doing here on the D3D Scrummy, if, if I drag something, like, for, Jose, if you start this, then you just drag it, take that, and you just drag it into the end progress. Oh, okay, I dragged it in there. You can arrange it anywhere, so, but you drag it into the in progress. You can you can shift things around here. So this is really cool. Like you can shift it around to different places. It's a very nice simple thing because it's cloud editable. You can edit. Anyone can edit yes. it. It's very nice. Super simple. Like no overhead. You have to log in or anything. Um, yeah, but that's how it works. Um, okay. If I refresh that, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the scrummy. So do that. Uh you should you should put the scrummy I would suggest everybody put the scrummy in their own log as well to, to have a good reference so we can organize better. But yes, it uh, is it is uh, good to, to to put it in the the log. Yeah, put it in a working log. That's that's good. Just embedded by iframe. It's that works really well. And um I think we're pretty good for now, so I'm going to talk to Jonathan regarding do, the, doing the frame instructional, so ex extruder plus mount, and I put one for you, Cedric, if you can do an, an instructional screen capture on the wiring, how you do the wiring, and um, there was also controversy regarding you have to make sure that what you have in your file is not a mesh or anything else like that, it has to be, you need to convert it to like solid format yes i think i have uh, okay solved, solved okay you've solved that 
That's good. That's morning. Good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Then try to. I updated. I updated the file. Excellent. I think that it's good, but I, I, mm -hmm. I will see again with uh, Emmanuel. Yep. And then Emmanuel is going to do the z-axis, detailed instructional. Um, we could actually do the. Uh, the please, print. It is, it is instruction to build the extruder in FreeCAD or instruction to build a. Well, a you have to. Yeah. Well, the idea is you have to figure it out. So you have to do. I mean, there's steps like attach the magnets to the magnetic holder, uh, put the screws into, uh, screw down the extruder, put the extruder in there. Um, okay. Wiring. Uh, yeah, right. But assuming the parts that we get off the shelf, like off the shelf, we're gonna buy the entire extruder assembly. So you only have to put it into the holder. You gotta fix it. You gotta put the magnets on the holder, and things like that. And the magnets also have polarity. So that's that's one of the logic steps. A, ma a disc magnet has north and south poles, so you can't just put the magnets on, on that carriage in any way. And the magnets, what we do right now is use crazy glue for sticking on magnets into the holes, and that works very well. Just a little dot of crazy glue, and you put it into, you mount the magnets. But the orientation on magnets, for example, is a detail that you have to Consider they're very strong. They're so strong that if you let two of them fall together, they will cr crack. If you let them unrestricted go towards each other, they will smash each other. They're so strong. Yes. So um, that's actually a point of caution for the build. And I, I had like little pieces break off the magnets. I didn't have a magnet completely shatter, but I, that's possible. It's definitely possible you can just shatter the entire magnet if you let it free um, come one to the other. Which means that when you're building that, you can't put in all the all the um, magnets into a, a mount because they're going to jump onto each other. The glue would have to dry, or you have to do do the gluing order such that you do far distant magnets first. They they. They fix, and then you do the closer ones because they're gonna jump. They're gonna the magnets are gonna jump around, <laughs> so things like that. But these are all kinds of things we have to think about when we actually um, put the instructional together. The the extruder plus mount is relatively basic, but you should do that just to show, just to basically like get the workflow of how you do the instructionals within FreeCAD. So you get comfortable with doing that, hiding and unhiding parts, what's, you know, how do you cut and paste. And the other thing about cut and paste, you want to do, I, one note is I always use screenshot and GIMP. I use GIMP in order to reduce the image size, because if you do a screenshot, it might be too large. And you're just like, once the document gets long, it gets really hard to work with the Google Doc. So what I typically do is I, whenever I make a screenshot, I, I, I reduce the size of the image using GIMP. So that's another thing. Um, what I should do is I should do a detailed instruction on all of this. This is kind of like, there's a lot of different steps. To me, it's very natural. Like I use, do this all the time, but there's actually like when I, when I say this, there's a lot of steps you have to watch out for. Uh, but the point is to, to start this, get this going. Um, let's see. So Jean Baptiste, up, keep updating the infographic, bill of materials. So so yeah. So everybody, to sum up, make a copy of the document, title it with your appropriate module. Um, then you can start trashing all the extra parts from that template because you don't need like whatever number of pages it has right now. Just use the useful ones and get creative and and do it. It's got a nice cover. And then we'll use these as printouts for the um, for the workshop. Now, after we do the detailed build procedure, we probably want to go with uh, some cheat sheets like main, um, we'll, we'll get there later, but basically cheat sheets that people would have the, the detailed instructionals online and they can download that and, and use their computers. 
but they would also have a cheat sheet which would be like a one or two page summary for each module how do you put it together like the key points to watch out for so that you can reference both the cheat sheet and like the full instructional for the complete steps and then after that the looping build video that i think you guys might have seen in my instructional the a very short video like 15 to 30 seconds that just loops through one module or one step that everyone does that it's on the so the workflow that we've discovered is everyone works together it's like this video loops on the overhead until everybody builds that step and if people are not done everyone swarms to help them out and that way the build gets done really fast and nobody gets left behind and that we found we discovered that in the last build so we just do this looping video and then we show the next short segment and the segments are going to be like 15 to 30 seconds preferably 15 so so that it's very tight the 15 seconds may take like five minutes to build and then we go through a bunch of those mm -hmm. so like a 15 minute sorry 15 second to five minute ratio is about a great it's about a good ratio to make this thing really really efficient for the build anyway so is everyone uh, clear what what they got to do yeah. yeah so the priorities uh jose you're talking about based on priorities i mean the priorities are that we got to get the instructionals going uh the cad what's going to happen with the instructionals is that if any of the cad is missing we got to fill the gaps there so um, I would say the workflow should be like contact me like as soon as you've got anything and stuff is missing like if it's not transparent um, email me if there's any questions does that that make sense Jose you think we're on track with priorities or yeah I mean the priorities are definitely to build instructionals because that's gonna take to get them nice and refined to the point where we first get I mean once we do them we're gonna refine them like uh, we can all go over them and like I can comment go through each one like as soon as you have it just show it to me so I can comment because because I've built this thing here and I, I kind of have more intuition about it and I am gonna put up videos like my goal is by the end of this week to put up a few more videos like we definitely need a, a promo promotional video and I want to shoot some build videos where I show exactly how you do this so this could help you you as well but before that happens, I mean, just try try logicking it out so you get used to hiding and unhiding and doing cut and paste into the document. And then when you have in, like things to fix, it won't be like a big task. It will be pretty easy to make fixes because you just got to shift things around in your document. So a good idea is to do the cut and paste of all the different components. Because uh, the cutting and pasting is going to take a bunch of time to get nice cut and paste. Uh, but then once you have all of that in your document, once we're reviewing the document and modifying it, it should be relatively straightforward to make corrections by shifting things around because it's cloud editable and you can cut and paste. So uh, so if everyone's good, I think we should quit it here, uh, hour and a half meeting, and uh, take it from here. Uh, does that sound good to everybody? Is everybody crystal clear? <laughs> um and if we had more people, we can divide more of these modules to more people. So that's why we would want to have a bigger team because there's more things. Like, for example, like if I add, um, like adding the, the heated bed, print bed, there's a whole a bunch of stuff that you basically mount that on a Z axis. So print bed is definitely missing and some other things. Maybe end stops. I mean, end stops are a separate assembly. End stops. Then there's... Um, wiring wiring is i'm going to prototype that here to verify my uh, one wire instead of eight wires thing but anyway if everyone's good we're good to go yeah yeah excellent guys so thanks a lot and um yes. yep so cedric if you can find other people in france you're in france correct yes uh, I, get those French I, people uh, to help you I, out <laughs> yeah are you considering making it to the workshop yourself um, it will depend on the type of workshop no I mean the April 22nd where we're doing the one day build of the um, the 3D printer in, in Hamburg were you thinking of making it to that or 
That's too far for you. Ah, in, uh, uh, in Hamburg, Germany, uh, the first workshop. Yes. Um, I. If it, it is in. in it, it it will be difficult for me. In, okay. In Germany. Okay. I I I. When you the first time that you, when you you do the program of workshop last year, the end of that year, the first workshop will be um, uh, where the program was to do the workshop the workshop in in Germany and the second workshop in Belgium. Right. No, so that actually never happened. I, I, yes. That actually never happened, so this is where we're doing that um, now, is the idea. I, but, I, but we won't have the Belgium, have, we'll I, just have I, the Germany I, right now. I'm, I'm talking about this because uh, the time when I see the, the announcing of this workshop, yep. I was thinking that the, it would be easy for me to go in Belgium. Belgium? Belgium? Yeah. Yes, in yeah. Germany. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we could get the collaborator from Belgium to actually organize that, but he he kind of dropped off. So, but we'll see. Maybe he wants to do it. That'll be good. But we don't have somebody in Belgium right now because we had a good contact there. But uh, right now, that's yes, not uh, really happening. In Germany, it will take uh, about how. Meaning this. One day, from 8 a.m. to about 5 p.m. Oh. And then we can party afterwards. Yeah, 8 to 5. This is, that's all it's going to take. It's not the, it is not the same workshop because is, I think that one one day is very, it's not too, too much. Oh, you're saying that, that that might be possible for you then? No, no, I, I say that for this workshop, one day is, is, is not long. It's not long. Oh. It's in and out. We're going to do that and and do it. Do some extreme manufacturing. Yep. Okay. Well, that oh. sounds good. So, um, in any case, so I think we can, we can leave off here. And um, I would say as soon as you've got... A first draft of this I mean yeah get right on top of it you know, see if you do a first draft and then um, let me see it so we can start doing the, the corrections yep okay so okay. guys thanks a lot uh, on the infographic I'll um, I'll show some of the the details so Jean Baptiste you can you can wait on that for a day and I'll, sh I'll get more pictures and videos and we'll continue from it yeah i mean it's coming along pretty well right now we just got to finish it get some videos made and um kind of like refine the bill of materials and make sure that, that we can get all the parts for germany yep okay so thanks a lot and um we'll continue this and i'll, I'll put up some more instructionals on some of the the basics of this process so that anyone else can join because it took me too long to explain you guys should could see like a short video and will be much more clear. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. So thanks a lot, and we'll be uh, we'll be talking. So as soon as you've got anything, let me know, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Okay. See you guys. See you guys. Thank you. Bye bye.